What's up, guys? Hi, guys. My name is Jason Lanier. I am a Sony artisan of imagery. So, um, what I wanted to do today, guys, was uh, we have women here today. This is awesome. There's always a deficiency of women at uh, at photo conventions, and so it's great to see this this lovely row of beautiful people. Guys, I'm grateful to be here with you guys today. What I'm going to do is show you just the pictures and walk you through them, the different lenses that I've used, um, and give you guys an idea as to um, how I create my work and, the, and why I choose the lenses that I do. Um, I am a pretty versatile photographer. I'll shoot anything from beautiful models, that's one of my models there, Jade, to uh, wildlife, to urban exploration, wet, weddings, I'm still going through puberty, but weddings, um, all sorts of that stuff. And what I like to do is I'm going to show you guys a mixture of my work and I'm going to tell you the lenses that I use to create it. So ask me your questions. We'll go through everything I have work in here from weddings, from Honduras, from all over the place. Um, and I have work in here from full frame lenses on crop sensor bodies, so on and so forth. So I want to get a feel from you guys as to what it is that you guys do. Tell me what, what kind of work you guys do. You work for Sony. Well, someone's speaking. We have a Sony plant in the crowd. Fantastic. Um, what do the rest of you guys do? Oh, by the way, this gentleman has claimed credit for me being a Sony artisan. <laughs> he found my 10 reasons video, sent it to your boss. And that boss contacted Sony US. Sony US contacted me, and now I'm standing here, your humble artisan servant. What, what else do you guys do? You film weddings. You film weddings. Yeah. What, do you, what do you shoot with? That's all right. That's all right. We, I'll, you just come on over, baby. I'll get a little pool of water. We'll baptize you and make you good to go. I'll convert you into the waters of Sony. No problem. That's the plan. That's the plan? What do, you, what do you want to shoot with when you grow up? That's great. And for video work, it's a fantastic camera. I use that camera a lot for my video work. I was just in Paris three days ago. And uh, that's exactly what I was using. And in fact, because the ISO is so awesome on that camera, I wanted a really wide shot, so I put on the 16 to 35 and shot it at 16. And because the ISO, and this is at night, and because the ISO is so fantastic on that camera, it allowed me to video and get amazing stuff. So for videographers, it's, it's a tremendous camera. What else do you guys do out there? Awesome, sports photography. So what, what, uh, what camera do you use? Canon. Everybody makes mistakes. Okay. That's why you're here. Fantastic. So <laughs> uh, we'll definitely, we'll, we'll baptize you. He'll get the right hand. You'll get the left. <laughs> we'll baptize you into the holy waters of Sony. All jokes aside, guys, uh, I think we can all agree that all camera manufacturers do a great job. All camera manufacturers um, produce great work. Um, you know, I teach all over the world, and I have an opportunity to meet so many different photographers. And one thing I'm very proud of is the fact that I have non-Sony shooters come to my workshops. I mean, it was only two years ago that I switched. But all of them do, and so it's really, I always say in my videos, it's about finding the right gear that works for you. And I mean that, right? Because like for a videographer, an A7S II is a tremendous option. For a still photographer, I love the A7R II. It's an absolutely tremendous camera. Cameras are so important, but what do you think? Is it, if you had to invest in something, would it be a lens or a camera? What do you guys, where are you guys at on that? Lenses, right? Why is that? They last if we don't take them through the jungle and shoot in rain and do all the idiotic stuff that I do. Um, what about you, brother? You like lenses? Fantastic. So we can invest in a lens and we can use that lens for 20 years, right? Uh, 30 years, depending how, on how well you treat your gear. And uh, that's in super important. So what I'm going to show you guys today is the lenses that I've used and what I've done with them. So I'm going to preface this by saying that all of the work that I show you is just Lightroomed. Okay? I've only edited it ver with Lightroom. And I do that for a reason. Yes, I know if I go in there and I take somebody's face and, and I use frequency separation and I spend an hour on every pore on their face, I'm going to make them look like a China doll and something that's not real. I understand that. Okay. That's not the work that I present. Because I teach so much, I want my work, I want the work that I show on my YouTube videos, I want the work that I show you guys here at a, at a, at a you know, presentation, I want it to look something like what I took, right? That's important. 
because otherwise you guys are like, and how many times have you guys seen a photographer, and this is why I do my YouTube videos the way that I do. You see a YouTube video, and the guy's sitting there, and the, light, the light's kind of okay, and the background's kind of okay, and then the shot pops up, you're like, whoa, that doesn't look anything like what he just took. That doesn't look like, and so I didn't want that when I started to YouTube and get out there to the, other, to the photography community. I've got to slow down, I'm speaking too fast. Jade must have slipped some ecstasy in my drink or whatever. But how did you find out? How did I find out? I'm speaking too fast. What I want to, what I want to show you guys is the work and I want to tell you the lenses that I use to, to shoot it. So I have some pictures up here that I'm going to go through. Um, this is a, some macaws. I was shoot, I was out in Honduras. I went to the ruins of Copan. And um, this is with the 70 to 200 f4 lens, okay? This is on the a6300. I almost said 6,000. It was on the a6300. Guys, one thing I want to ask, because we've, we've kind of had this discussion in the photography community, can you use crop sensor, can you use full frame lenses on crop sensor bodies and get good results? Yes or no? That's true, because you're shooting in the center, right? That's true because you're cutting out the edges of the lens. But can you do that? Because there's, there's big YouTubes out there that say you cannot do that. And I, that, that's, that's not true, okay? You, you can. I've done it for years. I did it when I shot Nikon. I always would buy full frame lenses and put them on crop sensor bodies because I, I reasoned, hey, if, if I move up into full frame, um, full frame bodies, all my crop sensor lenses are going to be useless. This next shot is with the 50 millimeter. This is the, the newer 50 millimeter 1.4 for Sony. So guys, the characteristics that you're looking for with the lens is you want that lens to have very natural, very nice fall off from your subject to the background, right? Something that I love shooting with Sony is I get my little green square. That green square, when I see that green square, it just puts a smile in my heart, right? That green square means it's found focus and it finds it fast, right? Have you guys, you guys Sony shooters, you guys know that? You get that green square, doesn't it just put a little tickle in your heart, make you feel good? And you hear that little right? I can't do the sound effect, but you guys get my point. Um, I did try eye autofocus on the parrot. <laughs> it's not a parrot, it's a macaw. I did try the eye autofocus, it worked a time or two, but for the most part, I just shot with a facial recognition and, and it found, it, Sony's found a way to, and the engineers have found a way to put birds into their system too. So when I was shooting, it really would. It would focus in on the face. And if you look at that eye, that eye is just spot on. It's perfect. Because when we're shooting, right, when we're shooting portraits or wildlife or whatever, we want to get that eye. Here's another shot in Honduras under the pier. This is with also with the 50 millimeter. This is with the A6300. Um, again, all these are just Lightroomed. And just, if you guys are wondering what I do in Lightroom, um, on, not on a shot like this, on a sh there's no skin softening that I'm doing. All I'm doing is moving the sliders a little bit. I shot this at, uh, what does it say, 640th of a second. Now here's the cool thing, right? If you guys, one thing that I'm really big on is if I'm going to use a lens, that lens, if it's a wide aperture lens, that puppy's going to go all the way to the max for me, right? The first thing I do when I get a lens is I go all the way wide aperture on it. Because guys, stop buying lenses and saying that you're going to shoot a 1.4 at 2.2 just because it's sharper at 2.2. That's bull crap. What's the purpose in buying a 1.4 lens if it's not good at 1.4? Seriously. I always heard that growing up in the photography industry. Oh, well, if you buy it at 1.4, make sure to shoot it at 2.2. Again, my belief on that is either the lenses used to really stink or people just aren't very good at shooting wide open because it isn't easy. Now, if you guys watch me shoot, I'll pick up my camera and I just hold it like this, right? and I one hand shoot and people think it's a gimmick. It's not, it's just really the way I shoot. And I'm able to do that if you guys are wondering, I shoot wide area, autofocus continuous for the most part. The other mode that I'll shoot in is DMF mode, which is dynamic manual focus, which is autofocus with focus peaking. DMF is fantastic because if you have your focus peaking turned on in your camera, it'll illuminate their eyes. Now for somebody like me who shoots a lot of people, portraits, animals, whatever it is, for me to get those eyes in, in focus, is critical. When those eyes light up, I set my peaking color to red and I call them demon eyes. Now I work with so many models like Jade, they are demonic. And so if you're able to actually paint their eyes red and you can see that they're good to go, you know your focus is spot on and that's what you guys want, right? 
So that enables me, when I'm shooting in that mode, that enables me to see that I'm getting perfect focus. And I can shoot a shot like this, which I'm standing a good distance back from her, um, with the water coming in, get all of this just looking fantastic, and her eyes are spot on at 50 millimeters, 1.4. Here's a shot from an Indian wedding that I did. Um, this is with a 35 millimeter 1.4. I love the 35 millimeter 1.4. It's one of my favorite lenses ever. I think when I switched to Sony, I switched to Sony when they really didn't have a lot of lenses. You know, when it, before it was super cool to be Sony. <laughs> I switched when I was still adapting all the Minolta lenses and adapting Canon lenses. When the 35 millimeter 1.4 came out, I thought this is the first lens that I fell absolutely in love with that was made for Sony lens, made by Sony. It's the first lens I fell in love with. I love the fall off. Again, guys, if you look, I don't apply any, I don't apply any Gaussian blur. I don't do anything in post. I don't blur the background. I want that to happen in camera, right? Because one thing you guys should know when you're, when you're editing your work, the more you edit it, the more probabilities, you, you increase the probabilities to make an error in your work. The more you have to tweak your work in post, the chances are you're going to get something wrong. Unless you're a master graphic designer, right? But I'm, I'm serious, I'm just talking from my own experience. I used to get into Photoshop and do all this stuff and get the actions and all this jazz. Now I just get in there, Lightroom it, I'll sync batch process the shots. I'll edit a wedding of 2,000 shots, four hours. And that's delivered to the client. Meaning those are the finished images to the client. I place so much emphasis on getting my work right in camera as much as it can, because sometimes you have to you know, move your levels a little bit, but I place so much emphasis on getting it right in camera that I can get it quickly to my client. And guys, quick work to your client means what? More money for you. You guys can move on to bigger and better things and start making more money. This, uh, this beautiful bride's name is Artie. This was shot with the G Master 85. If you guys shoot with me, if you guys want to party with me, we can party and have fun. If you guys are shooting with me, chances are what's going to be on the front of my camera, the A7R2 has to be pried away from my fingers pretty much. And the G Master is pretty much always on my camera. I love that 85. I'd rather, you know, if you guys haven't noticed, I'm trying to lose weight. So I'd rather focus with my feet rather than a zoom. Not focus, zoom with my feet, I should say. But the point is, I love this 85. When the G Master came out, to me, it was such a huge lens for Sony. It really was. And if you guys have watched my YouTube channel, I shot a lot with the Zeiss Battis. I mean, a lot. And I love the Zeiss Battis. And what ended up happening is, I remember when the G Master came out, my fans would say, oh, what are you going to do now because you love your Battis? And I said, I'm going to actually compare them. And if I like the Battis more, I'm going to say I like the Battis more, right? So I actually, I have a YouTube video where I compared the two. I love the G Master. It's about $400 more expensive, US. But the fact that it has the, the clickless aperture ring on it is fantastic for video work. I actually rolled some video of it in Paris just three days ago. Um, and it's just a tremendous lens. The fall off on it is tremendous. Um, and I know 1.8 versus 1.4 doesn't sound like a big distance. It doesn't sound like a big deal. But when you shoot a 1.4, you, you never want to shoot anything else. It's photogasmic. It's awesome. It really is. I love shooting with the, the, the 85 1.4. So what, what did I do on here uh, with her? Um, I went in and, and uh, softened her skin just a little bit. I went in and, and popped her eyes out just a little bit. But that's all I did on the shot, right? So if you look at the characteristics of the bokeh, the bokeh balls are very round, which is what you guys are going to want when you're looking at lenses. You know, it's funny, if you guys watch old movies where they shot, old movies meaning like, you know, before Jade was born, which is the 1990s. So if you look at the old movies and you look at the shape of the bokeh balls, they are usually looking like this. They don't look very pretty. You want very nice round bokeh, right? You want the characteristics to be very nice and round. That's what you guys are looking for with lenses. This is with the uh, 90 millimeter macro lens. All I did for this shot here, and there'll be a video coming out eventually on it. I don't know, I gotta edit my own videos. But I took, there was a little bit of the mesh on the um, stage for the, for the wedding. This is an Indian wedding again. 
a little bit of mesh on the stage just for the decoration. So when I shoot a wedding, I always like to make it very organic. I like to incorporate everything that's at the wedding into my shot. I'm okay on time. I like to incorporate that all into the shot. So what I did was I took the mesh just from the drapery that was hanging. I pulled it onto the ground a little bit. I always break rules. I put the, um, the ring here. I, and then I took a, a glass, just a glass that was, um, you know, people drink out of. I think it was a used cup too. But I took a glass, laid it down, and then I used the glass to prop up the ring so it would shine and, you know, right at me. I then took a Rotolite Neo and put it behind the glass so it would illuminate it from behind, which is what gives it this beautiful light that's coming in. I then took one more Rotolite Neo and held it up top shot it down so I, got, so I could get these diamond, this diamond to be absolutely beautiful. Okay. Great thing about shooting with a macro lens, guys, is the, fo again, back to what I was saying earlier, the focus peaking is so important because you're, you're able to see what macro work without focus peaking is very difficult. Okay. When I shot Nikon, I shot a lot of my weddings, and the macro work, I shot it all with the 105 macro Nikon. It's a great lens. But I would always struggle with I would always kind of do this. I would take it and I would fire it, then move my focus just a little bit, and fire, then move just a little bit. Because <laughs> when I got home, I was paranoid that I wasn't going to get a, a shot in focus. Because when you guys are doing macro work, I don't know, do you guys do macro work out there? I mean, if you, I'm not being facetious, if you breathe, it changes, especially if it's very close, right? So when I take this, I, I pull up that focus peaking, I make sure the diamond is perfectly uh, in focus, and I fire. The other thing that's great about focus peaking too is you can actually just you can turn on the focus magnification. It'll it'll dial right into right into where you want with the focus peaking, and then you can get your shot perfect. Make sense? There's another shot with a 50. I'm sure you, all of you know this because you're very experienced photographers, but you always want this front eye to be the eye in focus. Okay. When your camera catches that back eye and it doesn't catch this front one. Trust me, you're gonna wanna, you're gonna convince yourself that that was your artistic impression, right? Don't do that. Just, just stop t teaching yourself that. It's, it's a lie. And all of us have done it. My worst critic is my wife. She'll come in and I'll say, no, 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 I meant to do that. She says, no, you didn't, you screwed up. I say, yeah, you're right, I did screw up. It sucks. So you always gotta make sure you get this front eye in focus. And again, I shot this in DMF mode. When you have hairs and stuff that are coming in front of the eyes, that's when it's so important to have that focus peaking because the focus peaking tells you your shots in focus. You got to make sure your shots are in focus. You can take all the, you can go over here and take shots of this beautiful young lady over here in the booth, but guess what? If her eyes aren't in focus, your shot sucks. There's no other way to put it. You got to get those eyes in focus. So this is uh, Brenda out in Honduras. So again, to get that eye in focus, and you, if you guys, I'm sure, I hope you can see it from where you're sitting, but this is completely out of focus, this is in focus. That's being caused by that focus peaking in my ability to be able to see the shot. And I did shoot this in autofocus. This is not in manual, this is with DMF mode. This is, the, um, this is me in the Copan ruins. This is the uh, 16 to 35. Uh, I, the 16 to 35 lens is one of my favorites, absolute favorites for um, urbex, landscapes, so on and so forth. And I do use it for weddings. Now, you know, there's lots of lenses out there that are 2.8, which obviously are gonna be wider and let in more light. When I shot Nikon, there was a, there's a 16 to 35 and there's a 14 to 24. I always preferred the 16 to 35 because at the edges, it was, there was a lot less distortion than on the 14 to 24. I tried the 14 to 24 at a wedding. I tried to shoot it at 2.8, get a beautiful shot of the ballroom of the bride and groom dancing. And because I was shooting it at 2.8 and there was such a tiny spot for my lens to find focus, um, a lot of my shots were out of focus and I was really heartbroken about it. So at that point I stuck with the 16 to 35. So when, when I switched to Sony, and it was, I think it was almost two years ago this November, they came out with the 16 to 35 f4. It's an awesome lens, guys. It's awesome for group shots, for weddings. It's awesome for uh, if you want to take the ballroom shots of a wedding. And guys, you may say, well, it's only F4. Guys, you don't want, really, it, this is just me, but I don't want a 2.8 at that. I just don't, because I'm worried about my edges, right? F4 is really where you want to be. 
And it, with the cameras these days and the ISO capabilities that they have to be able to crank up your, your light, I mean, you go into a ballroom with an A7S II, you can just run around like a kid in a candy store shooting that puppy at 52,000 ISO and you're good to go. It's nuts. I have videos on YouTube of me rolling video work with the A7S II at 100,000 ISO. It's awesome stuff, guys, and it changes your photography. You guys should pick your gear based upon what you want to accomplish. You really should. That's the way you guys should look at things. What do I want to accomplish? So when everyone, when anyone ever asks me a question about gear, I always reply with, what do you shoot and how much money do you have? Well, well, why do we need to talk about money? Because I don't care what else. How much money? Is it $300? Well, then you're going to get the 50 millimeter 1.8. If you have $1,500, then you're going to get the 50mm 1.4. And yes, it is worth $1,000 more. You may not believe it. I, at one point, was in complete denial as a newer photographer. Great gear matters. When I teach workshops and we're out, you know what the difference is and when I get shots that other people don't get? Take away talent, take away experience. We're in the same spot, same scenario. They have a kit lens, I have a 5014. I have an 8514. I destroy them. And I feel bad for them. And if they shoot Sony, I actually let them borrow a lens and I say, this, this is what you're capable of doing. This is what you guys should be able to do. Guys, gear matters. I did a video recently, as I said, is it the photographer or is it the gear? It's both. Don't fool yourself in thinking it's only the photographer. You know, Steven Spielberg's not running around filming on handicams. He's not. Oh, he's an amazing artist. Yes, but he needs his tools to create his art. Understand that when you guys are buying gear. It's very important. There's another shot of the ruins at Copan. By the way, a tip for you guys, if you guys see me shoot, a lot of times I'll put my camera up and I'll tilt that screen down. If you guys watch me shoot, I'll be doing this a lot, especially when I'm doing landscapes, right? That's not to look cool or whatever else. I'm doing that so I get the line straight in my shot. What you need to pay attention to is when you're taking a shot like this, if you take it from down here or at your eye level, this is going to distort as it goes up. So that's why I love the tilt screens, because I can get down low without having to break my knees, because I'm an old man, and I can get down and get a great shot. Or I can bring the camera up here and make it parallel. So you guys got to be really careful when you're shooting to not do this with your camera or do this. You're going to cause distortion. I saw a horrible shot in the mall today. They shot it way too close, angled the camera up, and the shoe's like five times bigger than the person. You guys got to understand these things. Technique matters. It's not just your artistic vision, it's your technique that really, really matters. This is with the 51.4. Again, front eye in focus, back eye out of focus, and you just look at that. That's just gorgeous, right? This is an abandoned place that we found. We went in there and found that people actually live there. <laughs> then we asked for their permission to shoot there. And this was a hammock that we, not we didn't break it, but we took it down and we, I put it over the model and we draped it down. And again, what I love is there's no jagged edges on this. It looks beautiful, it just falls off. These are the characteristics that you guys want when you're using lenses, I'm telling you guys. And gals, we have lots of wonderful gals here. Again, another 51.4. This is with the rain in Honduras. This is on a suspension bridge, very Indiana Jonesy. I love that kind of stuff, but uh, Pulling out, get some great shots like this. Anytime you guys want to capture rain or anything like that, you need to make sure that your shot is back illuminated. That's how you do it. So if you guys want to capture rain and stuff, you either need to have the sun that's illuminating something or you need to, you need to illuminate it with video or with flash, video light or flash. That's how you guys capture rain, snow, leaves, all that stuff falling in your shots. Well, not leaves as much, but stuff that, you know, rain is transparent. So the only way for you to actually capture a shot of it is to you is for you to illuminate the rain. That's how you guys do it. So backlight it. So this was backlit because Honduras is obviously very tropical, and as is the case in many tropical locations, while it was raining, there was still sun, which happens a lot in Hawaii, Caribbean, stuff like that. So we got a beautiful shot of her. I love the fall off. This is actually the, the edge of the bridge as it goes off into the distance, and it shows you guys just what you can accomplish with a wide aperture lens. This is our beautiful Miss Jade. This is out in Niagara Falls. Um, this is with off-camera flash. Um, and this is of, um, this is with the 3514. This is a high-speed sync shot. Shot at 3200ths of a second. 
Um, and again, every, you guys are seeing the metadata, every shot that I'm taking is wide open. I have a few more here to show you guys that I've done with some lighting. This is a shot with the G Master. If you guys have watched my videos and see what I do, a lot of the times I'll take that video light, uh, the, like the, the Rotolite Neo, I'll bring it down, I'll bring the eye lighter, the Westcott eye lighter, put it down, and this is what I did with the model here. So this is Nicole, I brought her, brought her down. She actually, the eye lighter was down here. She knelt her, or didn't kneel, she put her head, she bent over and put her head right against the eye lighter. And if you look at the edge, you'll actually see a little sliver of the eye lighter right there. And this is just lit with one, no, I take it, this is with the Anova Pro, I take it back. This is with the Anova Pro. So I lit it here, brought it down, and got this shot. My, this is the G Master, again, lens I love. Editing on it, a little bit of skin softening, which the skin softening in Lightroom is very simple. It's just that you're, you're using the clarity slider, but you're pulling the clarity off of it, which is how it actually uh, softens the skin in Lightroom, if you guys are wondering. Um, popped out the eyes a little bit, and the rest of the shot is as it was taken. This is with the 35 F1.4. Um, we were, this is in Scotland at the Greyfriars Kirk Cemetery. Um, this is with Kristen, and we took the shot. I backlit it with a Rotolite uh, Nova Pro, front light of the Nova Pro. But again, one thing that I'll note is one reason I love fast lenses, guys, is it enables me to get shots that other people can't get in low light scenarios. If you guys want to be able to control your light, you can't just shoot when it's nice and sunny out there. There's, there's not, unless you're going to run around with a, a production crew and they hold up huge diffusers, there's not really a way to control light. So where you guys can differentiate yourselves is if you guys learn how to shoot when it gets dark, right? How many people say, oh, I'm just a natural light photographer? Well, then what do you do when it gets dark? You just stop shooting? That makes no sense. How can you be an event photographer, wedding photographer, sports photographer? You can't just say, I shoot natural light. You can, but you're just gonna only get hired just for the ceremony. Makes no sense to me, guys. Be full-fledged professional photographers. Learn your craft. If you prefer natural light and you wanna shoot natural light, I have all the respect in the world for you. Don't tell me you don't wanna do the other stuff, though. Don't tell me you can't do it. If you can do it and you can show me or anyone else that you can do it, but you still choose to shoot natural light, all the respect in the world, and I mean that. But just don't stop your learning process. That's not what a pro should do. You guys should be able to handle the needs of your clients. <laughs> Back to the, I took a picture of her with the G Master. So you can tell how much I love this, this, this camera and this, this camera and this lens. I think in general, uh, to kind of give you consensus what's in my kit, I have the 16 to 35, I have the 35 one four, I have the 55 one eight. And the 55 one eight, just so you guys know, that is not a shabby lens. Is it as amazing as the 51.4? No. But it is a really great lens, guys. The 51.8 is a, the 55.1.8 is a great lens. Then I have the 85. My wish list for Sony is a 135 for E-mount. That's my wish list. I'm, I'm, send, I'm sending prayers to Mount Sony and asking them to give me and all the rest of us Sony shooters a 135.1.8. Because on the A-mount side of things, guys, the lenses that I've used for sports photography when I've been out, uh, there's another Sony artisan, Gene Lauer, who shoots uh, NFL, and he's been very gracious and allowed me to shoot with him uh, many times some of the NFL games. I'll put the 70 to 400 Sony A mount onto my A7R2, and that 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 lens is amazing for sports photography. It's a 4.5 to 5.6, but I'm telling you guys, the lens performs and it performs very well. Other favorite A mount lenses that I've used with adapters are the 135-1.8, but it's a screw drive mount lens, so you have to use the LAEA4 adapter. I hope I'm not getting too techy and geeky, but uh, the LAEA4 adapter isn't as, it's, the focus isn't as great. If you guys are gonna use adapted lenses, you're gonna wanna go for the A7R2 or the A6300, or I'd imagine the A6500 at this point as well. So guys, I wanna leave time open for questions. We have about 10 minutes. I want to leave time open for questions and ask, see what you guys uh, have to ask. And uh, I hope this has been beneficial for you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, guys. It, it, it just keeps increasing. Make the crescendo come up.
So, um, if you guys have questions, let me know. You guys still here? Hello? Talking to you. Hey guys, if you want to learn online with me, go to patreon.com slash Photography, and you will be able to continue this craziness online from anywhere on planet Earth with me. If you want to join me live, go to jasonlinear.com slash workshops, and you'll get to see me in my full glory live and in person, guys. I think there's a smudge on there. Yeah, I got it. Talk to you later, guys. Bye.